Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. That's right, we're going to do the full Nick Shabazz review of the full Nick Shabazz review. But first off, before I go any further, I want to thank my Patreon patrons who make this review of my reviewing possible. And in fact, through their ongoing support of the channel, uh, they allow me to make future videos in which I, I thank my patrons for their ongoing support. So I thank my patrons for their ongoing support and allowing me to thank them for their ongoing support. Uh, there you go. Next thing, let's go ahead and do a size comparison real quick. Uh, this right here... Here is a Herman Knives Micro Sting. Uh, this is a Spydeco Delica size comparison. So given that this is a size comparison, we can go on ahead and do a size comparison to it. Here it is against a Spydeco Delica. So we see this size comparison is a little bit larger than a Delica. Um, there you go. Next thing, uh, we're going to go on ahead and we are going to be reviewing my review process here overall. Um, I'm going to give the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. But not of this particular good, great, bad, or ugly, but instead of the, the general concepts, right? And then I'll give a final conclusion about the final conclusion, but not finally until the end when it actually becomes final. So anyways, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. So on the good side of the good, um, I'm able to include a number of good things, which might not be great, but all build together to be greater than the sum of the good, right? Without the good, I wouldn't be able to talk about the good as effectively, and to me, that's pretty good. On the good side of the great, the reason that the great was added at all, because the channel didn't always start off with great. It used to be the good, the bad, and the ugly, like the movie, but a, uh, commenter at one point mentioned something along the lines of, well, it's asymmetrical, right? If you have the good, the bad, and the ugly, there are two negative categories in one. So to me, the good or the great is that it counterbalances that. You got the bad and the ugly, also have the good and the great. That was a really good insight from a viewer. Thank you very much, Liquid Cobra. I appreciate that and still do to this day. On the good side of the bad, um, it gives me an opportunity to address all of the little issues in order of escalating severity. That way I don't have to focus on just one or two little issues, but I can acknowledge that some of the bad may not be as bad as some of the other bad, right? We've got gradient badness, and I think the bad allows me to acknowledge that badness in a way that I think is pretty good. On the good side of the ugly, um, the ugly gives me a ready distinction between things that I dislike or find unpleasant in, in the bad and things that are outright problems, which really should have been addressed which really shouldn't have shipped like that, right? The bad is stuff that could be improved. The ugly is stuff that I really think needs to be, right? Or maybe shouldn't have been that way at all. So that, to me, is the good of the ugly. Final conclusion on the good, uh, well, the good of the final conclusion, not the final conclusion of the good, is that it allows me to share the relationship that I have personally developed with the gear. Outside of the good, great, bad, and the ugly that is present in the product itself, there are definitely times where a piece may have a lot of bad and ugly, but at the end of the day, the good and the great overwhelm it, right? And so it ends up being in my pocket despite that, despite having that bad and ugly, uh, whereas sometimes there's stuff with lots of good and great, but there's nothing quite that X factor is missing, right? And so for me, the good of the final conclusion is that I'm able to conclude things a little bit more finally, despite the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. So now for the final conclusion of the good is that the final conclusion allows me to insert my voice more explicitly. The good of the ugly, of course, is the utility of distinction between bad and ugly. The good of the bad lets me differentiate the bad better than the, uh, the bad that's better than the worst. Um, th that's an absolutely beautiful thing, but still isn't necessarily ugly. That's important. The good of the great is that it helps to offset the ugly and to ensure a balance of good and bad. And the good itself is good because it allows me to discuss a full spectrum of the goodness. On the great side, on the great side of the good, including the good in my reviews, forces me to think about the positive aspects of everything worthy of a video, right? As long as there's something on my table, I have to find the good in it, right? And it allows me to see some of the good that's present, even in the bad or ugly gear, um, and even if there's no great amount of great involved in the whole thing. So to me, that's the great of the good. On the great of the great, even if there's no great amount of greatness, um, it, it requires me to choose something, right? I have to choose one thing. Above all else, that's the greatest win about it, right? It requires me to find that thing which is most good, which is most unique, and that itself can actually be an interesting metacognitive task, so to speak, that I, I think is valuable as a part of my reviewing. The great side of the bad is that, to me, nothing is particularly immune from the bad. I have to find the bad even when the good is really strong, even when the good is there. Um, in order to do a good job, weirdly enough, I have to find the bad, and so, to me, I think that's that's a great thing. On the ugly front, the great side of the ugly 
is that it's included at all. Because oftentimes, especially in the world of increasing inner world, of increasing influencer, right? Ugly is much less commonly found in some kinds of genres, right? A lot of people doing reviews might not ever go there. And so for me, uh, in, in that world of influencing, ugly is viewed as ugly rather than great. But I think that it's one of the things that is, well, a nice thing, right? I'd rather not find ugly, but I want the ability to be able to, right? That's an important part of who I am. That's an important part of my review disclaimers and all of that kind of stuff. And it, it's just, I think it's one of the things that set my content apart at the early part. So to me, the ugly definitely has that great side. And the great part of the final conclusion, but not the final conclusion of the greatness, is that it allows me to end the review with a single cohesive message, which can be more or less at odds with the relative amount of good, great, bad, and ugly, and to conceptualize it. Let's be conceptualize the gear differently in places where it doesn't fit that norm. So the final conclusion for the great is that the final conclusion allows me to give one final message that I think sets everything apart. The ugly being included is itself a, a beautiful thing, uh, and thus I would say great. The great of the bad is that nothing's immune. I have to find the bad. The great of the great makes me choose something great uh, as a part of it. And on the good front, the great of the good is that, well, I have to find something good, even if there's not a whole lot immediately present. On the bad side, um, well, we'll start on the bad side of the good. There is a fundamental problem, I think, with listing the good, which is that when you fail to list something as good, I don't talk about something like, oh, how's the stock thickness? Well, it's fine. I don't care. It's right about where I would expect it to be. It's not good. It's not bad. It's not ugly. It's just right in the middle. People will assume it's a bad thing rather than neutral. Or worse still, they assume it's a conspiracy. Oh, my God, why didn't you talk about that? Well, the answer is because I didn't care. It was fine. It was aggressively okay. And if I did the good, the great, the oh my god, I don't care, and the ugly, uh, and the bad, of course, I can't forget that, and that would be bad, uh, then we end up in a trouble. So um, to me, there, there, there's just that desire not to say it's fine about 50 different aspects of every piece of gear. And so that, to me, is part of the bad side of the good. On the great bad side, um, not the great bad side, but the great bad side. There you go. That's unclear. Um, the choice of what is great rather than good is, I feel like, very, very subjective. It's even more so than my normal, you know, of course, every review is subjective. All of this is just my own personal opinion. But this one is especially so, because people can disagree on the positioning of good versus great, uh, even when we both agree that there's a goodly amount of greatness, right? You could take a look at a piece and you know, if I say, oh, wow, the great is how they treated the material, somebody else says, oh, wow, the great is the action. Well, we're both right, right? It's just a, a very, it's a different kind of view, right? And so at the end of the day, it's not a terrible disagreement, but it can be a thing. And that is definitely a bad part about the great. On the bad side of the bad, there are definitely times where I have to nitpick to find issues, where I'm pointing out badness that is ultimately... Not all that bad in the grand scheme of things, or in some cases, the badness ends up being kind of neutral in face of the pricing or some other interacting element, right? Or the essential nature of a great choice made elsewhere forcing something that to some perspectives is a little bit bad, right? So you can end up in these awkward situations where something can be simultaneously good and bad, and then the comment is, they go crazy, right? Uh, and so that is definitely a bad part of the bad. Uh, it, it's a little weird with really good gear, and sometimes you get that weird ambiguity of the essential nature of the thing forces it to be a way. Uh, that essential nature is good, but the consequence is bad. So that's the bad of the bad. The bad of the ugly is that the line between bad and ugly is often one of, I'll be real here, visceral, personal disgust. As a result, my ugly could really have nothing to do with the item itself, and often does, right? It might focus instead on elements of the company, elements of their marketing, elements of the warranty process, or other kinds of things that might be barely bad for the gear. Like somebody could carry it for the rest of their days and see nothing ugly with it. But for me, I'm so disgusted with a given business practice that they're doing, or like hiding suppliers and things like that, that it's unquestionably ugly. And so for me, you can end up with these uglies that are not actually about the thing that they're ugly, but for some people, they might not even be bad or good, or, and it just ends up being problematic. So that's the ugly, the bad, no, I'm sorry, the bad or the ugly, the ugly or the bad comes later. And then on the bad side of the final conclusion, but again, not the final conclusion of the bad, it does have a tendency to pave over major issues in favor of a final subjective roundup, right? When I do this final conclusion sort of thing, there is a recency bias, right? So even if I said all of these terrible things about things, 
people might hear that and go, well, but the final conclusion was positive, and when maybe some element of it might have been a deal-breaker for them, right? And so people who find themselves with a different perspective in the final conclusion versus the good, the great, the bad, the ugly, that could end up being a little bit bad in and of itself. So that's the bad of the conclusion. And the conclusion of the bad is that the conclusive nature can sometimes overwhelm the good, great, bad, and the ugly. The ugly's bad can sometimes be another man's good, and that's not great. Um, the, the bad can mean that bad which wasn't actually bad can become bad if the good and the great are great enough, and that's a little bit problematic. The bad of the great, of course, is the pure su- subjectivity of elevating any one trait over another one, and the lack of mention in good can occasionally make something that's neutral seem bad or even uglier, like an omission, like a conspiracy, oh my god! So that's all of the bad. On the ugly front, I don't think that the good has any particular ugly, right? It seems pretty neutral. It does kind of the trick. The great, unfortunately, does have a little bit of ugly, uh, which is that it sets up a tension, right? When you have something that is generally bad, like the the item itself is just not very good, uh, you kind of have to either describe as great something that is middling at best or you have to abolish the good and the, I'm sorry, the great and the ugly, and you do a quick review. But then your quick review lasts 30 minutes. And, oh boy, commenters find no problem with that whatsoever. So, you know, that's, that's a little bit of detail. On the ugly side of the bad, uh, there is, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, the ugly side of the bad, I got that one right. There are absolutely makers who find the presence of any kind of bad in a review to be completely ugly. They don't understand the distinction between review and advertising. They leave the mere presence of bad for them, well, that that ends up feeling ugly, right? And it negates in their eyes any value of discussing the good or great or a final conclusion that can be overall, you know, well, uh, different, right? So at some level, uh, you know, it's a pretty ugly mindset, but some people are just bad at taking feedback. And, well, that's pretty ugly. The ugly of the ugly, of course, is that the harsh value judgments that I am passing by calling something ugly rather than just bad or something I don't understand could actually themselves be really ugly when they're provided by a jackass like me, which, you know, to be clear, I'm not able to gear design my way out of a paper bag, right? I've always said that I am not a very good designer, right? I sit down to draw things, it turns out derivative. This is why I don't make knives, right? This is why I'm the one YouTuber who isn't doing that. Anyways, I, I, I digress. But, you know, there is a level at which my discussion of the ugly reveals the ugliness of my own positionality as an outsider passing judgment on the work of skilled craftspeople. Can somebody who really has never made a watch, and probably never could, actually complain about the ugliness of something? Uh, So at some level, the ugly itself is ugly if my ethos as a critic isn't accepted, which, well, to many people, sure (laughs) isn't, at least certainly to comment this. And then I don't think there's anything particularly ugly about the final conclusion, so let's jump into the final conclusion of the ugly, which holds that the conclusion isn't particularly ugly. The the, the ugly can be conceptually ugly as a judgment coming from an outsider. The bad's ugly is that many people interpret badness as ugliness, negating the good and the great. The great, of course, forces you to choose between pinning a medal on a donkey or making a 30-minute quick review, neither of which are well-received. And the good just doesn't have much ugly, so let's jump into the final conclusion. Okay, so final conclusion, but not about the final conclusion, but about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly, and the final conclusion. Anyways, there's a lot of good here, right? With the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly allowing me to fairly discuss flaws, to counterbalance the bad with the good, to insert my own subjectivity and limited scope, identify the excellence as well as the deal breakers, and conclude in a way that I think is optimally fair while still being realistic. But of course, there are still some downsides. With the good and the great leading people to disagree on the nature of goodness and on greatness, right? Occasionally forcing the use of that which is actually neutral as good or sometimes bad depending on the, the situation, and the bad and the ugly can be controversial, can be off-putting, can be occasionally contrived, poorly accepted, and the final conclusion itself can be viewed as an opinion that for some might override the overall perspective, although the actual effect on that conclusion is... uh well, inconclusive. So, final conclusion about this final conclusion is that overall it feels like a lot of navel-gazing, because even with my legitimate attempts at introspection throughout this video, I've wound up... Oh, oh damn it, sorry. It was one level too meta here. I'll kick it down a notch. 
Sorry, I've uh, never met an analysis I didn't like. Okay, anyways. Uh, but yeah, final conclusion is that although the rigidity of the format can occasionally be problematic, the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly's good, great, bad, and ugly seem to justify the good, great, bad, and ugly consequences of using it for my reviews. And ultimately, despite the good, great, bad, and ugly of it all, I think the good and the great outweigh the bad and the ugly of the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly, and allow me to finally conclude that my final conclusions are good rather than great, bad, or ugly. So I hope this was interesting to you, and I hope most of all that you have an absolutely wonderful rest of your April first. Bye now.